So it's my great pleasure and honor to present you today some perspective we obtained uh, in the framework of the Deep Energy Community on the abiotic organic synthesis during hydrothermal ad alteration of the oceanic lithospheres. So, in fact, forms and origin of abiotic organic compounds naturally formed on Earth was one of the, the driving questions we had in this community because finding and understanding this process uh, represents a gate from the mineral world to the organic one with huge implication for deep life, for the origin of life, for extraterrestrial terrestrial life, but also for resources and energy. So we were a lot since a long time to focus on hydrothermal vents and especially alkaline wines that represent uh, open windows on the dynamics of serpentinizations. And it was reported in the literature since sometimes that in these vents we have uh, the attested presence of methane, but also organic acids, shorchen, alkanes, and, um, and uh, uh, at, the, at the outlet of the fluids. So there was a, a huge uh, 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 effort this last decade trying to understand how serpentinization due to the capability of producing uh, highly reduced fluids in the form of hydrogen, how this, uh, if this hydrogen was capable to transform uh, an inorganic carbon species into organic ones. And in theory, as you can see on this plot, which our work published recently by Vincent Milesi, you can see the evolution of the carbon speciation as a function of the reaction progress. And you have at the beginning of the reaction, the formation of a little bit of organic acid in the form of formates, but also you have a, 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 the, the methane that's formed and constitute the, the dominant product of this uh, 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 thermodynamic calculation. However, we now know that despite all this huge effort, most of the natural and experimental systems suggest a kinetic inhibition for the formation of methane at a temperature lower than 400 degrees. So we now wonder where does the methane from, and it is likely from higher temperature reactions, because, and it is suggested by the presence of the fluid inclusion that were reported some time ago, early in the 19th by Debbie Kelly and Gretchen Frugin, and uh, this uh, ubiquitous presence of this methane-rich fluid inclusion in olivine-bearing rocks uh, could be uh, the largest reservoir of high temperature uh, abiotic methane on Earth and then could be the deep source for the methane that, are, that is vented at mid-oceanic ridge. So what can be the products and of the uh, reducing powers of serpentinization at lower temperatures? If you run, as Vincent did, a similar calculation by preventing methane to forms during serpentinization, then what you can see is that you have a little bit more of organic acid, formates and acetates, but at one point, the main product is what Vincent called the graphitic carbon, but we can call it more largely carbonaceous matters but this should be the dominant product, product at low temperature. So do we have proof for that in, uh, in nature? So here I have the pleasure to present the work from Maris Forna that was recently published, and it's show you what was obtained on fully serpentinized artbergite that were collected here close to the location of Casal in a serpentinite outcropping uh, there. And then for those who are not uh, well used in the, the interpretation and, and of thin sections, then here I just summarize uh, what happened to this rock, the main stage. So this rock, rock is made of classical uh, mineral we can find in, in mantle rocks, so olivine, or pyroxene, spinels, and those rocks had a, during their high temperature history some uh, magmatic impregnation that uh, results in the formation of plagioclase. And then as the temperature decreased when those rocks were exhumed during their oceanic history, then the rocks start to alter due to water circulation and the, most of the minerals, so olivine and, and, and pyroxene, turn into serpentines. 
and then the, the spinels, but also the plagioclase, alter into uh, chlorite and ferrochromite, where hydrogarnets were also formed during all these phases. You continue to decrease the temperature, then you form saponite from the former uh, alteration assemblage, and then hematites occur in this system. Why do I take some time to describe all these different minerals forming these rocks? Because at each stage of the alteration processes, then we observe here, it was thanks to scanning electron microscopy, we observe the formation of carbonaceous matter that related to each secondary minerals in this sample. So here, this is the examples of the hydrogarnets. You can see also similarly this through the elemental distributions. But you can see here at the dark phase, because it's carbon, you can see thin film that are coating this hydroandadrite. And Raman analysis of it can show you that there are aliphatic compounds. It also be a oxygen functional group, such as carboxyl ones. So, and the formation was related to local hydrogen production that is related to the formation of hydrogarnets. And probably in this case, the presence of chromium in hydrodite was also important because hydrodite that, like, that were lacking chromium were also lacking uh, carbonaceous matter. Perhaps one of, the, one of the most impressive occurrence of carbonaceous compounds in these samples were the ones that were associated with the hematite and the saponite. And you see here, this is as huge as the mineral phase, so large aggregates, uh, more than 100 micron in size. And then this really fill all the saponite and the crack, and probably if the reaction, the reaction has continued, it will have progress and progress. So you can see here on the Raman spectra, the blue part show you that the composition is a little bit different compared to the other generation. So we have aromatic compounds, but a little bit less of, of oxygens. And here it was related to hydrogen generation during the formation of hematite, and likely also supported by the well-known uh, catalyst uh, um, power of the iron-rich saponite. So the strict spatial association between this uh, organic phase and, and the, the mineral phase uh, really uh, support the idea that this, this carbonaceous matter could have been occurred simultaneously to the growth of the host mineral assemblages. And all this carbonaceous matter has variable size elemental composition. Here you can find one model that was estimated based on the whole spectroscopy data. So this elemental composition, but also the aromaticity, the presence of aromatic cycles, the aliphaticity, the change of aliphatic components, likely reflects the formation modes, the environmental conditions, but also some limiting factors at the local scale, such as the presence of catalysts. So I show you one example, but here are all the rocks we looked at during the project, and it's really suggested that this condensed, carbon, condensed carbonaceous matter is ubiquitous in such kind of environment, and this could be a widespread process associated to hydrothermal system. So does this fraction, totally unaccounted so far, has a global significance? Maybe for deep life, does it mean that it's, it, we have an additional bioavailable source of carbon for subsurface microbes, especially in serpentinization related environment where in some place pH, pH is so high that inorganic carbon sources are lacking. So if you look at some metagenomic data we obtained in our groups that came from a basaltic aquifer at four, 500 meter depths, then you can see that in all the genes that are carried by the microbial community of these aquifers, and in addition to the one that relate to the sulfur, iron, and nitrogen cycles, then a huge part of the genes that related to carbons are degradation of aromatic compounds. Does it have a relationship with the carbonaceous matter? This is something we have to look into detail in the future. But that means that 
Maybe this is not a refractory uh, component uh, trapped in the deep earth. And as it was suggested in, in the 19 by um, um, Everett and collaborator in their nature papers, so maybe this is a reactive fraction that further allow the diversification of abiotic organic compounds. And in this schematic, it is illustrated that maybe this carbonaceous matter has to be considered as olivine here, and that both during a further hydrothermal uh, uh, alteration will evolve olivine into clays, uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbon or carbonaceous matter into different kind of organics. And so what, what are the source type of, of um, compounds? This is totally for the moment uh, unexplored. And this force us to consider that initially we had a series of abiotic uh, or inorganic compounds and we, they, they were suspected to convert uh, in environments where you have high reducing powers into hydrocarbon, methane, but organic acids or, but, and, and, and perhaps polyaromatic hydrocarbons. And those were often considered in evolutionary model lead, leading perhaps to the origin of life that they would form monomers and these monomers would perhaps in some place under favorable conditions would lead to a larger polymer that resemble a biological macromolecule. If carbonaceous matters and reactive one is present and easily formed directly from these inorganic compounds, then we have to consider the systems more globally and, and more, uh, uh, in a more complex way because if this organic matter is reactive, it can also allow the production of methane, hydrogen, as it was highlighted in Alberto's talk previously. But then we have here uh, uh, an, another way to consider uh, abiotic synthesis at uh, low temperature. Another outcome for, for that derived from such a work is that if this carbonaceous matter is so ubiquitous and so easily formed within the oceanic crust, then it is a fraction that it is trapped and maybe has a role to play during subductions. And here I just presented some results that I obtained with colleagues from IPGP, Julien Cyber and Vladimir Lechnik. And then we play with this serpentinite, the natural ones that uh, show here using scanning electron microscopy images, uh, all this carbonaceous matter inside. And then they were subjected to experiments in, uh, uh, at uh, 1000 degrees C and 6 GPA during seven days. And here you have pictures of the product to obtain. So first, we show that the carbonaceous matter is still there in between the olivine grains uh, after the serpentinization of the samples. So here you have the Brahman showing you that it is still poorly ordered. And then we also found here, as, as shown by ACM, but also the diffraction pattern we obtained, the presence of hydrogenated diamond-like structure that forms within all these textures. So this is open the, the door for new investigation because uh, for the moment, all these fractions that remain, that rely, that uh, uh, is uh, associated with the, the mantle part of the, of the slab is uh, not well uh, known. So just to conclude, <coughs> message to, take in, to keep in mind, and I was so happy about this opportunity with uh, Muriel Andrani to wrote all this and, and compile all this observation in this chapter, but during carbon processing in the oceanic lithosphere, so this is a multiple fluid rock reactions that allow the formation of a largely unexplored diversity. So, and the recurrent formation of carbonaceous matter, so a lot to explore in the upcoming decade. I thank you for the, your attention and your time. <laughs> Yes, we characterize them with using ramens, but also using uh, um, uh, um, 
the electron uh, transmission electron microscopes uh, based on, on, on FIB sections. Yeah. And so for the moment, the best fit we have for both the Raman and, 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 and the um, uh, TEM data are hydrogenated hydrocarbon, but based on what I have seen yesterday about the, the diamond-like carbonates and so on, I think there is really some, still some work to, to better identify all these phases, but we have stable and exciting phases in... Yeah, we see diamondoids in uh, high-maturity pyrobitumen type carbonaceous material in, in shales. So I would, oh. would expect that maybe you have them as well. Thank you. Thank you so much.